In this series of videos, we're going to go through one of the most important reactions in organic chemistry, which are substitution reactions. And in, in specifically, we're going to talk about nucleophilic substitution reactions. Now, before we get into too many details as to why they're important and, and how they happen and, and why they happen, I think it's important just to have an introductory video where we're actually just going to des describe what happens. Uh, so before you can sort of answer the advanced questions about how and why things happen, you sort of have to be able to realize what's happening, right? So let's start off with two really simple nucleophilic substitution reactions. And I'll draw them out. And then we'll just sort of look at them, analyze what is exactly happening and what are the different components of our nucleophilic substitution reaction. And from there, in later videos, we can build on a little bit more detail as to exactly uh, why they are important, how they happen, their mechanism for how these reactions occur, and and um, why there's why they're important. So let's just start off with just some really basic nucleophilic substitution reactions. This nucleophilic substitution reaction I am drawing is between uh, methyl chloride or chloromethane CH3Cl with a hydroxide ion, so OH minus. And it's giving us CH3OH as a product, as well as Cl minus. So when you see this reaction for the first time, I think a good question to ask yourself is really just, what is happening? What happened here? Um, what is different? So the question I like to ask is, what bonds formed? And what bonds broke? Because Every reaction in organic chemistry is a transaction of electrons between atoms, and the bonds are really uh, bonds are made up of electrons. So we're really just exchanging electrons between different atoms. What happened here? Well, what happened here is well, we started off with Cl to chlorine, uh, sorry, carbon to chlorine, and that's no longer present, right? We no longer have a carbon to chlorine bond. So that bond broke. We have broken the carbon to chlorine bond. And what bond formed here? Well, we've gone from an OH minus to now the O is connected to our carbon. So we have formed a carbon to oxygen bond. And this is, is there anything else which has happened in this reaction? No, this is really it. Uh, there are only two, one bond formed, one bond broken. And this is the mark of a substitution reaction when you notice that this carbon, we've broken and formed one bond on this carbon. This makes this a substitution reaction when you're swapping bonds on carbon. Now, the reason why we call this a nucleophilic substitution reaction specifically is when we get into actually naming the different components of this reaction. When you think about where the electrons are, remember that You've got chlorine and CH3. This is what we call the substrate. But we can call it a different name because if you think about where the electrons are with the CH3Cl, chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. So it's actually going to draw these electrons towards it, and the electrons in this bond between carbon and chlorine. And this carbon is going to have a partial positive charge. So it's going to be a little bit more electron deficient than it normally would be. And in this case, we sometimes, for that reason, call this the electrophile. It's called this the electrophile because it's partially positive and it is attracted to electrons. Now, the second component of this reaction, the OH minus, is fairly electron rich. Note it's got three lone pairs of electrons around it. In fact, it has a negative charge. We call this the nucleophile. And this is a nucleophile because this is going to donate a pair of electrons to our electrophile and form a bond. That's the definition of a nucleophile, something that can donate a pair of electrons to um, an electrophile. And the name for what we've actually formed is no real fancy name for it. We just call it a product. This is just the product. And finally, at the end, this is called the leaving group. So the Cl minus is called the leaving group. And so these are the four components of every nucleophilic substitution reaction. We've got a substrate, which is the electrophile. 
a nucleophile product and a leaving group. And we're always going to be forming and breaking one bond on the carbon. That is the definition of a substitution reaction. All right, so let's look at a slightly different substitution reaction. Let's look at a slightly different substitution reaction. Let's put bromine in here. And we'll have bromine attached to a carbon. And let's say there's three other CH3s attached to this carbon. And we're going to have this, uh, so this is tert butyl bromide, this molecule is called, tert butyl bromide. We're going to have it react with water. And we're going to form in the process, uh, we're going to put lone, two lone pairs on our oxygen. And we have carbon, CH3, CH3, CH3. And we're going to end up with actually HBr, HBr. All right, so what bonds have formed and broken in this reaction? So let's look, um, maybe I should move my CH3 out a little bit because it's gonna get in the way. Okay, so formed. What's formed, what's broken? By formed and broken, I'm referring to bonds, bonds here. So we are forming a carbon oxygen bond, right? So we're going from, we're breaking the carbon bromine, right? That's no longer present. And we're forming carbon oxygen. So we formed a carbon oxygen, we've broken carbon bromine. So this still falls in the category of substitution because we're swapping uh, one bond for another. We're, we're breaking carbon bromine and we're forming carbon oxygen. Now, this is it as far as the carbon is concerned. Now that for bookkeeping purposes, there is also uh, another bond we need to concern ourselves with. And we've actually also formed an HBr. That wasn't present in the starting material, right? The bromine was attached to the carbon. So we've actually formed HBr. And we've gone from H2O to OH. So we've actually broken HO. Okay, we've broken HO. And this type of reaction, when we're going from an H attached to something to attached to something else, this type of reaction also has a name, and you should be familiar with this reaction by now. This is called an acid-base reaction. So when you're swapping a bond between, uh, swapping a hydrogen between two different bonds, two different atoms, that is an acid-base reaction. So this reaction is actually built up of two components. There's a substitution, and there's the acid-base component. So let's try and identify each of the four different components on this reaction. We here have our, our electrophile, which is this component, electrophile. This is our nucleophile. Uh, this is gonna be our product. And this bromine is our leaving group. Now, as it turns out, the bromine ends up plucking a hydrogen off of, of water after the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, um, but this is still our leaving group group. Okay, and we haven't really talked about how each of these reactions happen, but these are two different substitution reactions, and, and this is what happens. So we're, like I said, we're always forming and breaking a single bond on carbon uh, in, in the top case and in the bottom case, and in this bottom case we actually also have an extra reaction. That's not actually specifically part of the substitution reaction. Um, so this is just what happens. We haven't gone into why or how the mechanism of this reaction or anything else, but this is how you recognize a substitution reaction is just looking for breaking and forming a single bond on carbon. There's one other small thing to note, and that is a uh, minor detail. Look at your OH- minus here. Our OH- minus we've drawn as being just OH- minus by itself. Um, you might also see, so in nature, Charges are never just by themselves. They're always gonna be balanced out by something. They might not be drawn on a sheet of paper, but they're still present. And we might not draw them because they are um, connected to what we might call spectator ions. Uh, they don't actually participate in the reaction. So here I'm drawing uh, the counter ion to the OH minus, which is the Na plus. Uh, I've decided to use Na plus. We could use potassium or lithium, but in this case we'll use sodium. So this is sodium hydroxide. And so the sodium at the end of the reaction ends up uh, with the Cl minus. So our charges are balanced and our charges 
will always balance, even though they might not be explicitly drawn in uh, sometimes just because they don't participate in the reaction. It's important to know that, that they're, they're, they're there regardless. So in the next series of videos, we're going to go through talking about the, some of the experimental observations concerning these different types of reactions and then going into more detail onto the, how these reactions actually happen.